Enduring Hellblade, a picked warrior is on a journey to descend into the darkness of hell in search for her lost love. Soon after beginning, she is blocked by a locked gate until she passes two trials. These trials represent lessons that Senua must learn before crossing the threshold. First is the trial of Valraven, ancestor of the seers and god of illusions. Considering Senua's history, this is appropriate. Seers were said to have special knowledge of the divine or supernatural. They were known to have the ability to see things that were invisible to others. These people had many names across various cultures such as oracles, prophets, or shaman. Both Senua and her mother could be classified as a seer using this description. Valraven is the guardian of this trial, representing the illusions of this world. These illusions come in many forms. The trial of Valraven addresses two primary examples of this, the illusion of reality and the illusion formed by lies. The lesson she must learn during this trial is the ability to counter the forces attempting to deceive her. Valraven is the physical embodiment of this deceit. By learning to vanquish this god, she will learn to sever the illusions and lies that cloud her own memory and thoughts. This is a tool she will need as the story progresses. Before addressing the specifics of Senua's experience here, I want to dive into the origins of Valraven. While Norse mythology is the basis of this story, Valraven is a creature from Danish folklore. Most accounts state that when a raven eats the heart of a fallen chieftain or king, it becomes a Valraven. This supernatural beast gains human knowledge and unnatural abilities. They were known to lead people astray and perform other wicked acts. This monster shows the process of gaining wisdom, which is a theme found in the lore stones of this area. By hanging himself from the Yggdrasil and sacrificing his left eye, Odin gained the ability to read the runes and permission to drink from the waters of wisdom. As Druth said, he gave up one way of seeing for another. Hugin and Munin, the two ravens of Odin, were sent out into the world to attain and bring back new knowledge. Using ravens to represent Odin as well as Valraven is no accident. The symbolism of the raven totem is a powerful one. While it has various meanings, the most relevant to this story is that they are the bridge between the manifest world and the other world. They travel into the spirit realm and like Odin's ravens, bring back messages to those who sent them. However, all symbols have dual meanings. If the pure raven is a bridge to the spirit world, then the corrupted raven is a wall keeping the two worlds apart. Just like its nature suggests, Valraven has attempted to lead Senua astray long before the start of the game. As with all of the enemies she confronts, the God of Illusions is the embodiment of one aspect of her trauma. Clues to exactly what Valraven is can be found throughout the trial, so let's go back to the beginning and work our way through. There are two primary mechanics during the trial of Valraven. The first is lining up the ravens in order to unlock the gates. This requires Senua to view the world in a different way from a different angle in order to proceed. The other is learning how to use the archways to reveal the truth. For example, this wall here seems to be impassable until Senua observes it in a new way and finds that the blocks have actually crumbled. Just as the raven totem is a symbol of the bridge to the spirit world, the archway marked with the raven effigy acts as the bridge between these two versions of reality. This reality bleeds through in the forest when eyes can be seen looking at her from the stones and the trees. Whether it be paranoia or a sixth sense, Senua perceives something unseen always peeking out from behind the veil. Not many can see into this other world, however. Senua's mother could, and tried to teach her to not be afraid of the figures that crawled through the walls or the souls who would whisper to her. Her father, however, could not understand her psychosis, and the story was told that she was cursed, that something evil would consume her and bring calamity to all. After her mother's death, she was led to believe that this curse was what killed her, and if Senua was not careful, it would do the same to her. Over time, the village began to believe this as well. When a person is constantly told that they are wicked or somehow wrong for seeing the world differently, it is easy to begin to believe the lie. After a plague overtook her village, Senua began to believe she and this curse were the cause of the sickness and left home to go fight her personal darkness. Moving back to the trial, the voices discuss her failure to break the curse after leaving the wilds. 
However, she met a man named Druth who told her stories of the Northmen and their gods. Like all mentors in the hero's journey, he gifts her with a talisman to use during the quest. Before that can happen, however, she climbs up into a bird's nest, metaphorically entering the cradle of this illusion. It is there that Valraven captures her and begins to peck at her fallen body, preparing to feed. In life, there is enormous pressure to succumb to the illusions of the world. Things right before our eyes can go unnoticed until we rend the veil of deceit. Usually, this is something we must do for ourselves. Luckily, Druth gifted her with a talisman to help in this endeavor. He explained that the Iron Mirror is a window into the underworld. A mirror reflects ourselves back at us, and iron is a metal believed to guard against negative energy. It allows for self-healing after emotional turmoil or protection from psychic attack. In this context, it allows Senua to see into her own unconscious and reveal the nature of the darkness. Druth suggests this darkness is not something outside of herself, but something within. The curse is one of her own making, and while it controls her mind, it exists within her own unconscious, meaning that she can control it. For most of her life, Senua was told she was cursed, wicked, and only through the gods would her affliction be cured. She began to unconsciously curse herself the more she believed these lies. The word curse can track its meaning to the old English word curse, or a prayer that consigns one to an evil fate. For Senua, this curse was self-imposed, a byproduct of years of psychological abuse. How often do we convince ourselves of something that is not true? That we are worth nothing, that no one cares about us, that there is no point in trying as we are doomed to failure. Hearing ourselves think this is hard enough, but when nearly everyone you know tells you the same thing, the curse grows stronger. Senua came to believe this curse was real, that the voices would drive her to the same dark fate as her mother. After the plague, she left to confront it, but failed and returned to find her village had been massacred by the Northmen. Believing both of these tragedies were caused by her, this solidified the curse in her mind. In this moment during her trial, she must decide whether or not to allow these illusions to consume her or fight back. The trial of Valraven was designed to teach her how to see through these lies. With Druth's iron mirror and sword in hand, she cuts through the veil of illusions. It is appropriate that this is the first trial for our hero, because how could one move forward in life if we continue to curse ourselves to a dark fate? It is said we are always our own worst enemy, that the biggest boulder blocking the path is the self-defeating lies we tell ourselves. With Valraven defeated, she has learned a technique that will allow her to see through the illusions present in her life. It is only now in the story that we discover the faces of Galena. The words of her mother can be heard, helping Senua find peace with her way of viewing the world. She is now free to proceed down the path, to discover the truth, and comes to terms with the dual nature of the world she has been taught to fear for so long.